According to the reports, the government could postpone its ban on new petrol and diesel cars by 2030. Now, that is the ban. That's following the EU's decision to dilute their own restrictions after an objection from the German car manufacturers. Now, industry giants have claimed that the 2030 goal is now untenable. It was always untenable. I saw it. You saw it. I don't know why they didn't see it. And the EU have climbed down. Uh, the bloc will allow car manufacturers from Germany and Italy. Maybe they've been watching us on GB News and maybe listened to a couple of my monologues where I've said, don't be so stupid. And um, also Germany, Italy, they're going to continue making combustion engines after 2035 if they run so-called e-fuels, which we've known about for some time. I don't know why they just didn't simply switch to that. But that's why I'm asking you, what do you think it's all about money? Now, this comes as Westminster claims it's still uh, on track to meet its net zero targets by 2050. Energy Secretary Grant Schaps announced a set of new government measures, including some investment, uh, even more in offshore wind so what do you think? Do you think net zero is about climate or do you believe it is about money? Right, so uh, joining me now is uh, Lois Perry. She's the director of Car26 and also uh, Jim Dale, senior meteorologist at the British Weather Services. Now, I hear, Jim, that you would have been in the studio. However, to reduce your carbon emissions, you took the train and the train was, what, cancelled? What happened to it? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I should say... Uh, yeah, I got there this I'm not going to say there was snow on the line. It, it wasn't that at all. Uh, what happened? I got there, looked up, 1423 to London, cancelled. Raced across the other side. It was just about to leave the, 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 the earlier train. Missed it by about 30 seconds. That's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. Well, no, you see, I, that um, is the way it goes, unfortunately, if you haven't got your own car. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's the future he wants for all of us, Nana. Well, no, no. well, I suppose at least we've got down the line, which is handy. <laughs> um, Jim, you'll have yeah, to tell me how I'm, I'm supposed I'm to feed that here. plant. But... For the fourth week in a row. So this must be important, Nana. Um, you know, the, the fact we're actually talking about this yet again and all the rest of it. So, yeah, it, it, the wheels keep turning and for very good reason. Mm, but they seem to be turning in the wrong direction because they're going backwards. Lois, what do you think? Yeah, well, my opinion is that it is completely about the money. Like everything, follow the money. And you can see that because most of the policies that are being implemented in the name of green aren't that green at all, whether it's the renewable scam, where everything that is, is made in China, like the solar panels and the wind turbines, using electricity made from coal-fired power stations, or, you know, the green, uh, supposedly green electric cars, which actually produce more CO2, if you believe in that kind of thing, to actually make and aren't better in any way for the environment because the batteries and the mining. But let's look at the millionaires or the billionaires that have been made um, through the climate scam. You've got Al Gore, who is now worth personally $330 million since he was beaten by George W. Bush. You've got Dal Vince of Ecotricity, who's received since 2002 50 million pounds in subsidies. He donated a quarter of a million to the Labour Party when Ed Miliband was um, energy secretary, who then used public public money to give back to him. Probably it was that money that was donated. He's worth 250 million. You've got schemes like the North Sea project, which is supposed to offset carbon by burying it in the North Sea, which we're paying 280 pounds per tonne to bury. That's our money, public taxpayers' money. You can offset it with companies in Indonesia for $10 a tonne. So if this isn't a money-making scam, I really don't know what is. But it isn't offsetting. You're still producing the same amount of carbon. Absolutely. So it's just about Cash, uh, yeah. what, what, Jim, what would you say to all of that? I saw you shaking your head to a bit bits of what Lois yeah, said. There's a, there's a lot in it. I mean, a lot of that um, is straws in the wind. We've, we've, we've kind of been there before. You can pick and choose little bits and pieces. Look, I, actually, there's no conflict between the, the green revolution uh, aiming for net zero and the economic side of things. Uh, just a few figures for you. Uh, the net zero economy in Britain, according to the British industry um, report, um, January 2023, so, so very recently, uh, generated £71 billion pounds, um, in the UK, and that's going in one direction, one group direction only. Uh, the net... The net Zero economy was 1.7 times more productive than the national average for UK economy, according to the GVA per employee in 2022. And I could go on and on. Electric car sales increased by 40% in 2022. Now, you're saying you're picking on a few people making some money in some places. I think that's always been the case. I think we just have to look at look at the fuel, uh, the fossil fuel industry, and the shells and the SOs who are walking away with massive, massive profits and and hardly giving them back whatsoever. So look, the green revolution will continue on. That step backwards that you talked about in Germany, I, I mentioned last week. I said 
this isn't a straight line. There will always be uh, one step forward, two steps, uh, two steps forward, one step back. Uh, this may be a, a small step backwards, um, but the revolution continues. Well, you say it's not a straight line. It seems like a pretty crooked one. Uh, Lois? Yeah, I mean, the reason why Germany has done this is because it's not commercially viable. It, in a free market, things happen that are supposed to happen that actually make money. If the government has to get involved at any point in terms of subsidies or making it more expensive to have fossil fuels, to make renewables look cheaper, or just in, in any way, basically, you know, making get, getting involved with the market and, and into interfering with the market, then it shows you that it's not viable. There would be no such thing as renewables if there, if there wasn't subsidies. There would be no such a thing as a green but, economy well, well, but, without public but, but, money. But you would think that actually they would put something in it to, if they wanted to develop it, irrespective of whether it made profit. Jim, you've got about 30 you, seconds. You're fine. You need to look at the, the, the fine print of that decision, by the way, because the decision isn't just to say carry on as you are and, uh, and extend it a little bit further, because uh, the CO2 neutral fuels only, the synthetic fuels is what the the underlying score that is there in other words that that's all you can use and i know that's not a perfect answer but as i say you sometimes got to swap these things around look we're on a one-way street here i mean me and lois have been speaking now for what many many weeks um 4.25 um of six of the political parties in this country the main political parties and i say 4.25 the 0.25 being the tories because they're hardly getting there um, I, 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 I've, I've, I've taken and wrapped themselves around the, the, the Green Revolution, going in the right yeah, and, direction. And 62% of, it, of British people, according to a YouGov poll, who expressed an opinion, want a net zero referendum. And the reason they want that referendum, Jim, is because you're right. All of the parties are wrapped around this ridiculous green agenda because it is a global agenda and it is to de-industrialise the West. Okay. And you need to realise this. Okay. Well,